No worries, mate. So I've got Ash here, and um, Ash has been a member of Tagoa for a good four and a half years now. And um, Ash had a uh, encounter, well, actually, about four years. He had an encounter anyway in April 2016. Um, and um, he's out in the Murray Mallee, which is where John and Mark and Dave have been recently out on their trip to Red Banks out past Borough. But uh, Ash's place is a bit further south from there. But anyway, Ash, um, how you doing, mate? All right? Good, good, mate. Um, your uh, encounter, you've, you've had a couple of others since that one too, I believe, haven't you? I've had one in Angiston as well, coming out of Angiston. Yep. Park, thing there. Oh yeah, by the river there. Yeah. Yep. What happened that time? Um, that time, um, that was a young male, I think. Anyway, because strikes were very prominent. Yep. And it just dashed out in front of me, then doubled back through the grapevines. So yeah, very skittish. Very. Uh, it was a younger one. Had no mange. Strikes were very prominent, and uh, more of a, uh, a tanny colour than a dark brown, that one. Okay. Um, and that was during the evening, was it, that one? That was about 11.30 at night. Okay. That one there, but yeah, very skittish and very quick. Wasn't a mangy fox either. Yeah, no, fair enough. You've done a bit of hunting. Yeah, so I've done a lot of hunting. I made a difference between a fox and a, and a fox, so yeah, I definitely have. And um, tell us a bit more about your your other sighting, anyway, your original sighting, because that that was pretty detailed from memory. Well, that was uh, that was about the best sighting you could ever get. Um, we were fixing the fence um, at my property, and we stopped just before sort of just before sundown, an hour before sundown, so we could go for a ride on the quads. So my mate went one way. I went the other. He went one way because the dust of the quads was throwing up, so he couldn't follow behind me. So he went right round the border of the property, and I went left. So I couldn't find him, so I went for a little ride right down the road that um, joins to my road, and then I came back um, up that road. And then as I hit my property along the road, I seen um, what was it? Represented a driver's thing to me, which it was um, a dog-like creature that has was walking, and then as soon as it seen me, it started running. And when it started running, its its tail stood still, and you know, so the distinguishing features were things like um, its backside was like like a kangaroo sort of way and its, it's face was ugly it was an ugly animal really like inset inset eyes sort of thing and little ears like a like a corgi it's the only way I can really describe it like a corgi's ears yep but as soon as it seen me it done the bolt so I chased it into the into the mallee there and man, it just ran away as fast as it would. It did not want to get seen. It did not want to be known. So yeah, but I've seen it from, it came from my side from right to left within about 25, 30 metres of me. Yeah, 25 metres. And then I caught up to it to about five metres and then I went through the bush and I couldn't find it. But it was gone. It was gone. Right. Nothing ever I'd ever seen before. Yeah, it was just just amazing, really. I thought at first we were looking for um, pictures of African wild dogs or something like that because we thought it had been a skate dog from Monato. Oh, okay. And then my neighbour said, "No, it's a fire thing. That's what you're saying." And we were went, "I oh, do, sure, mate, sure." And then I looked through the internet, and then I found a female. But most of the pictures I could see were, were of male five scenes. And then I found a female one. And it was exactly the same. Exactly I, the same. Okay, so the shape of the head being a bit different between the male and the female, is that what was leading me um, to that conclusion? Shape, yeah, the shape of the head a little bit. 
And from what I'm sort of seeing, maybe the the females don't have such prominent stripes, but its fur was all matted. That one it was what had a matted, uh, like a mangy fur. Okay. Sort of, like a like a dog that hasn't been brushed, basically. Yeah, I know what you mean. Messy. Yeah, the, the the thing that really sort of stick out in my mind is the shape of, the, of its arm, basically. The shape of the back end of the animal. Yep. Was almost like a kangaroo, but its legs weren't as bent as much as a kangaroo. Yeah. And the way, way it ran, it was like a skipping sort of run or a, um, yeah, it, was a, it, it wasn't a dog sort of run. It was, yeah, more of a... Oh, So the the back feet were hopping, but the front feet were running. Yeah, yeah, sort of like that, you know. And the tail stood still as it ran. The tail was still when, like it was using its tail as balance. Yeah, okay, I'm with you. Sort of thing, but yeah, I've got a real good look at it. And um, yeah, that's, it's definitely cool, I've seen it. No doubt about it. And from the reports I've had from the area, it's been seen a few times. So your neighbour pointing out to you that you'd seen a thylacine, was that sort of indicative that he might have seen one as well? Well, no, just the way we described it to him, he just said uh, thylacine straight away, and uh, we all went, oh yeah, my dear, it's, it's um, extinct and that, you know, we chopped it off really. Yep. But into doing a bit of investigations, man, that's the only only animal I've seen on the internet that looked anything like it and I'm positive it was, it was one well, the local postmaster's 99 he's seen it three times yeah right I did actually speak to him and his wife his wife had seen one out at Virginia in the 1980s when she first migrated to Australia wouldn't surprise me there was one in uh, Malala not too long ago yeah, yeah, there's been a couple of sightings at Malala. One was a truck driver and another one was a young girl on a property in the back of a ute or something. Yeah, and that's, um, after seeing the one in Angerston, it makes me think there's a family of them around there somewhere. Yeah, well, you know, with, with the other sightings we've had, there's an electricity trust workers sighting near um, Swan Reach back in the 1970s, I think. Um, and then I've got a few other independent witnesses from the area in the 60s and also in the last few years as well on the Blanchetown Road, um, yep. north of you sort of thing. Um, yep. Yeah, there's there's quite a few sightings. I could probably pin together at least a dozen sightings over the area. Um, and, you know, to 100 k's north of there, you've got Tiger Plains. Um, yeah, that's Tiger Plains Road and Tiger Plains Station and, you know, there's... There's a little bit of history there. <laughs> since, uh, since um, you know, seeing that one, I've sort of asked other people, and another friend of mine, he's got a sheet metal company, him and his brother have got a shack at Blanchetown. Yep. And they were coming back one night at about three thirty in the morning in Annandale, which is just just out of Blanchetown. Yeah, I know where it is. They've seen one as well. Yep. And also there's ladies at the Cambrai shops, which is, um, they were coming out in the darts one night, they've seen one too. And even other friends of mine up towards Swan Reach, about 17 k's up the road, um, she woke up one morning and there was one at her chicken coop. Yeah, right, at Swan Reach. Uh, well, they're about 7, 8 k's away from Swan Reach, but it's 17 k's away from me. Are they on the same side of the river as you? Thanks a lot the river as well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I've, I've another chap I know who's a hunter who um, used to camp on a property uh, about 30 k's east of your property back in the 60s. He saw one out there when he was a little kid back in about 1968. Yeah, so there's definitely a family of them there. And, uh, yeah, yep. after seeing the one at Angus, then I'm sure there's a family of them there. Yeah, uh, I reckon they, they take cover in the uh, Wombat Warrens myself. Oh, that would be a perfect place for, uh, for them to go. And even coming down like Sedan Hill and a lot of those hills between Sanderton and Sedan, even... Some of right those gullies. To, mm. Yeah, right up towards um, Truro and that. All those hills are just um, 
blanks with, with uh, cave, little caves and bends and shit that they do. There's and, a few old mines up there too, I believe. Yeah, and you've also got, you know, you've got a lot of people that own properties up there, but you ask them how many times they go to their property, they might say, oh, I'll go to my property probably once every month. Yep. And I said, right, out of that once every month, how many times do you drive around at night? And nine out of ten of them were saying, never. Yep, they wouldn't know what's out there. Yeah, so really, if you don't do a lot of driving at night, very rarely to see one. The, first, the one I seen on my property was just getting dark. Yeah, yeah, he was he was probably just waking up. Yeah, just waking up and, you know, going through. And I've have heard recently a few, like, yip, yip sort of sounds going on, but... Did you hear the recordings that we got in Tassie the other week? Very like that, yeah, very like that. That's Excellent. What, yeah, that's what I'm going off, so, yeah, I, I dare say, and past my block, there's such a big bush there. Yeah, um, all the way out to the pipeline. Yeah, all the way out to the pipeline, there's that big bush out that way that, even, again, with the landowners, I've asked them, how much of the property have you really explored? Yeah. And so, go oh, probably 10%, 20%, which, you know, is a lot that they never go to, you know, they might go to their properties and stay around the house or whatever. Yeah, they, do, they usually stick to the perimeter and stuff, doing the fencing and bits and pieces. Yeah, and that's about it. So, you Did know, you get all your front, gates and stuff finished off in the end? I've still got the front fence to go. Okay, yep. And, and the fence the other side, but yeah, heaps of hard work there that I'm not looking so, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, it was, it's all time, mate. It all takes time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so yeah, no, so, yeah, no. I've got to get to it. There's always something to do up there, but yeah, I'm always on the hunt, mate. I'm always looking. Uh, always. You had much rain out in the Mallee at all yet, or is it still particularly no, dry? No, I think it's desert. Yeah. Bowl out there at the moment. It's probably the brownest I've seen in ten years. So. Oh, well, fingers crossed you get a bit of rain this year, mate. Yeah, well, we're about due for the dams to fill, so hopefully they do. All right. Down there, you had much down there? Or what? We had about four inches here about three and a half weeks ago, which was quite pleasant, and um, we've just had a bit today. We've probably had about half an inch today, maybe. That's good, mate. Even had a little bit of hail earlier on. I could hear it bouncing off the roof, so that was unusual. But, are you um, working down there, mate, or are you just... N- no, I'm just uh, living off of the fat of the lamb at the moment and doing this. So um, I've, I've got the house set up as a rental property sort of thing for holiday homes and stuff, but um, that's all died in the ass at the moment, so we'll see if it recovers. Oh, People will want to go on holidays again one day, I reckon, just to get away from yeah. their partners <laughs> after being yeah, stuck in the house with them for six weeks. <laughs> yeah, well, I've lost my job as well, so... Oh, Jesus. Waiting for that to start again, too. So we're all on the same boat, I think, mate. Yeah, well, just sit tight, buddy, and um, keep your family safe, keep yourself safe, and, yeah, go and, right. go and see your bu- mum, mate. I'll let you go and uh, go and sort that, sort that out. No worries, mate. Too easy. All right, mate, I'll um, catch you when I see you. Mate. All right. Yeah, well, look, when, when I do get allowed off of Tasmania and back to the mainland, I'll definitely try and get out and see out the property there, and we'll have a yarn. Yeah, I'm going to put another camera up again. Oh, yeah, good stuff. Down by the dam? Um, well, yeah, I don't know where to put it, man, actually. Do you think, see, I don't know, but do you think it's followed the same tracks sort of thing? Yeah, I think they would. I think they'd come through roughly the same spot. Yeah, so, yeah, I might put it up near there again. And then that was where I had that other one where I buried the chicken. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. No, give it a go, mate. You can only You can only get lucky. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully, you know, hopefully we do, man. That'll be, be good. All right. Well, I'll I'll keep trying down this end anyway. How are they going? You pick much up there, or? Oh well, I've got a few sightings from a few folks. hasn't yeah. hasn't been super duper, but um, a few from travellers coming through as well, which is interesting. What? Um, that's a question I wanted to ask you. Do you think they're the same species? Uh, possibly. Yeah. Oh, the local cops just pulled up, I think. I might have to go. All right, mate.
All right, you take it easy, buddy. All right.